Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about conditional rendering in React. Let's get started. So components are often going to be need to display different things depending on different conditions. Now in React, we can do this uh, conditionally rendering JSX using JavaScript syntax. So we can use some if statements, okay? We can use the and type statements and operators. We can also use the uh, question mark space or with the co uh, colon operators as well. We can do this in a variety of different ways. Now today what we're gonna look at is how to return different JSX depending on a condition. We're also gonna talk about conditionally include or exclude a piece of JSX and a common conditional syntax shortcuts that you'll encounter when you're looking at React code bases. So the first thing I want to look at today is going to be how to utilize this again in like we've been doing is doing maybe a business case scenario. So we want to use this to let's say let's have a trade show exhibit packing uh, list. OK, so here it's a trade show exhibit packing list management. Okay, so again, this happens a lot. You're going to a trade show, you have a bunch of stuff to pack, and you want to be able to know what you do have, what you don't have. And for also, for example, so here's 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 just a, a basic problem here, okay? You want to ensure that a safe and, and efficient packing and transportation of items, each with a unique handling requirement. Okay, so let's say that you have you work for a company that needs this system to track the packing statuses of each component. Now, this is also to ensure that all necessary items are packed, secured, and accounted for before they ship. So how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to actually create up a nice React component. And this component structure is going to take in an item. So let's go on and set up the item here. item and it is going to take in a couple things here okay it's going to take in a name and it's going to get a check of is packed okay and then what do we want it to return in this instance well this component itself okay is going to represent the individual exhibit component with its name and the packing status okay so that's our name and our packing status and then it should be able to expand out to show specific handling instructions or uh, whether it's packed properly. Okay, so we want to return here some list item. Okay, the class name here. Here is going to be something very specific. Okay, so what we want here. is to have the item and then is packed question oh, question mark and why is this and this needs to be sorry this is a little strange here there we go now it's working all right so we have the item, okay? And then it's going to check is, is packed, our question mark, okay? And then it's going to return here, packed, or colon here is just going to be empty. So if it's true, it'll return packed, else the class is going to be empty, okay? Now, what else do we want in here? All right, well, here inside of our bracketing here, we want this also just to be the name, okay? So that is, that is our item. Now, the next part that we are going to want inside of this is a packing list, okay? Now, this component is going to compile the uh, exhibit components into a manageable list categorized by uh, the list name or trade show event. And it's going to render each item, 
that we have here, uh, components, and it's going to be doing this in real time. So let's actually get that going. So let's go on and do export default function here. And this one is going to be a packing list. It's not going to take in any parameters here. And it's going to return in here. And let's actually uh, give this a, a section title or a tag for now. And what we want in here, let's say we're going to put in an H, whoops, an H1 tag. What did that not want? There we go. And let's say uh, my company INC exhibit packing list. Okay. Then we are going to have our unordered list. And each of these is going to take in an item. Okay, and this item is going to have a couple things in it. Okay, first is is packed is equal to, and so in this instance, we will have true. Then maybe we'll have a uh, name is going to be a uh, prototype device model X. Okay, so now we can actually just copy this and we can make a couple. Oops. We can make a couple items, uh, copies here. We'll edit it here in just a second. All right, so I think three is good enough. So this one will still be true. Uh, Let's give this like an or your interactive installation kit. And let's make this one false. And maybe it's the marketing brochures. Great. All right, so now we have in here a, a nice little packing list. So let's let's go on and take a look and see how everything looks. Here, let's go to our new terminal. Wiki wiki, there we go. And once we see that it's successful, let's move on over. All right, and you see here my company Inc. exhibit packing list. We have prototype. Uh, model X, interactive installation, and marketing brochures. Now notice here it didn't actually do anything yet, okay, because we haven't actually added in any of the content in there, okay? So we want them to maybe, maybe we want them to have some sort of like, I don't know, this, uh, like a check mark or a big X if they're not there or we want something of that sort. So, so let's actually go on and maybe add something like that in. So to do that, let's go back on up here. And so this item function actually needs to be changed, right? So I'm gonna actually cut this out for now. And let's go on and add in an if statement in here and our condition is is packed now if it's packed okay we're basically wanting to return here our our item okay and then we also are going to go down here return oops return this and maybe you know, maybe we want to actually even make this, let's make this a little bit simpler for now. Let's actually get rid of this in here and just call this item. 
And then here with the class name, we're going to do the same thing. We'll turn this back to item. Let's get rid of that. Okay. So now what we're going to do here is right here, let's put in maybe some sort of like emoji. Okay. So let me go and grab a check mark emoji real quick. So it occurred to me that maybe some of you don't know actually how to insert an emoji. So let, let's actually, let's just, let me just do this here. So if you're on a Mac, okay, you can actually hit control command space. Oops, let me actually be over here. Control command space. And here you get, notice here you get your emoji list. And I think it's maybe, yep, here we have check mark. Okay, and we insert that check mark. Now into this one, maybe we will want to insert something else. So let's uh, save this and let's do our uh, control command space. And let's do X and maybe we'll have this red X here. Okay, so now we should, based on the true and falses, should be able to actually see what's going on with this. So let's let's go on over here and notice, check, check X. You can see it very clearly and very distinctly that we have it. Now you could potentially maybe put them over here or anything else, but I thought that having them at the end here looks kind of nice. And again, you could have them maybe in both sides even if you wanted to so that it's relatively clear what's going on. Okay, now this is great that you can actually still see everything on the list. All right, but what if you didn't want it to return anything if that item was already checked? Okay, so you don't want these check marks on the list. You only want to see the things that you have left. Well, this is very uh, simple and I'm actually just going to comment this out and you can say return null here, okay? Oh, whoops, that's right, and now notice all you have in here is your marketing brochures. So again, we've we've made uh, something like a to-do list before. And so it's very nice now to be able to see that they have something like this. And maybe instead of an X, maybe you want, uh, I just thought about this, is that it doesn't really look quite right. So maybe an O or something like that. Okay, so it looks like you're still missing it, okay? So again, you can see, you can change that as well, which is nice as, uh, for you. So again, there's, there's a couple different other things that we could do here. We could change up to have uh, conditionally including JSX. We can conditionally exclude JSX. So now what if, again, we can control basically if anything. All right, so we can do, Let's 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 think of this about what we may want to do here. So maybe all right, you know what, you know, let's let's do it this way. Maybe you still want to see everything on the list, but maybe you want to change, for example, the way that something how something looks, okay? So let's let's go on and do that. So we're let's hmm. So what would be the best way to do this? What if you wanted to maybe have it struck through? Okay, so let's let's bring this one back. It's coming out the null. And so we have this if is packed. Okay. Now we could technically write this in a, a slightly different fashion as well. Okay. So instead of having this big if statement, okay, that we have, we could do something like this. So let me actually let me actually just comment all of this out. 
and let's change this up just a little bit. So let's say you want to return here and you do something like li here and here, let's change this up to our class name again is going to still be item. And what we're gonna put in here though, let's clean this up just a little bit. We want to have in here the, the curly brackets and we'll say is packed question mark, name, plus here, and we can actually put in our, our emoji. Okay. Oh. Colon, name. Okay. So this, now, if we look here, notice this looks perfectly fine. This one doesn't have anything it doesn't have that that x but we could add that in okay to something like name plus here and we grab that and notice now all of this is inside of this nice little clean bracket and notice it's significantly more compact than what we have here it just depends on what you're comfortable with you can do it in two different ways now let's let's say that we want to add in something to kind of bring bring it home. We want to see these, but we want to make it so that people don't read this text. Okay, so let's give it a strike through. Okay, so let's do that. So if it's completed, okay, we're going to add a delete. Key. And so I'm going to grab you, put you there. And that should, in turn, scratch them out. Oops. And it did not like. Maybe I need to give it a little bit of a space here. Is that what it's not liking? Oh, actually, this whole thing here needs to be in curly brackets. All right, so there we go. So now you see that it has this strike through, okay? And that makes it at least even more clear that, look, I did these, they're still on the list so that you can see what I should have packed, but at least it gives it a nice way to put it in. Now we could potentially even do some other types of things if we wanted to. So let's maybe add in the logical and operator. So the logical and operator is these two ampersands, two and signs in there. And we could change up, let's, let's maybe change this up again. Sorry for all the comments in this, but I thought, I thought at least it's a good way to kind of play with our data. So here we want to do return. And again, we're going to have a list here. Our class is uh, class name is still going to be item. And inside here, we'll do something like curly brackets name curly brackets is Packed and our check mark. Okay. Over at notice, this still works as well. So, again, you have a variety of ways to do all of these conditional type expressions here that we've seen. So, we've done at least, well, let's see here. One, two, three examples. And I believe we should do, maybe we can do at least one more example with, with the time that we have left. And so let's do conditionally assigning JSX to a variable. 
So if we wanted to do this, again, I'm, I'm commenting all of this out. This is still inside the item function. And let's do something like let item content equal name. And then we can have our if statement. So if is packed, then we want it to be item content is equal to name plus our check mark. Okay. And then we will, oops. We will return. And here are our list element, again, with our class name is item. And here it's just going to be in here our item content. Okay. And again, we see that it works just fine. So this is ha this here we have done a lot. So what if what if you wanted to add in that delete? Okay, so the that strike through, okay? Well, that's that's very simple. All we have to do is inside of here. Let me cut this out. Let's put this so we can do multi-line here. Oh, and I will do delete strike through. And notice now this works. Whoops. And again, I keep forgetting to put this curly brackets in. And we see here that it has, and for Pete's sake, what's wrong with me today? All right. So now we see here that it has the check mark and it has the strike through. And again, just as we did in the other one, you can feel free to add in and maybe an else statement if you wanted to to change this up as well to the to the O or the red X. It doesn't it doesn't really matter. It's just for your preference to be able to control what's going on. So what have we gone through today? Well, we've controlled branching logic with JavaScript in React. Now we've also returned JSX expressions conditionally with an if statement. We've also done conditionally save some JSX to a variable and then include it inside of other JSX using the curly braces. Now we've also used our condition question mark uh, and then our render and otherwise that we had before. And we've also used the and statement. Now these are all very common shortcuts that are used. Now, you don't have to use them again if you just prefer a plain if statement. It, it, it doesn't really matter. But all of these that we've gone through are all used all the time. So it just depends on what you're comfortable with and be ready to use them or read them out and understand them. Okay. If you guys like this and you want more of this content, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.